One Long Island Middle School says that tossing the football around during recess is just too dangerous. Some of these injuries can unintentionally become very serious. The old pigskin is going to stay locked up during recess. Too many rules and like too many regulations. We're talking footballs, baseballs, soccer balls, lacrosse balls, and any other equipment that could harm a child. Or even unsupervised cartwheels. Cartwheels and tag, I think it's ridiculous that they're banning that. You go for recess, that's your free time to kind of let loose and, you know, recharge. Apparently, the teachers were upset the kids were getting hurt and stuff. What kinds of injuries are you seeing? Oh, head injuries, bumps, scrapes, worried about concussions. We want to make sure that our children have fun but are also protected. Is the ball ban fair play or is it out of bounds? Oh, you are fired up on this one. You heard that right. A ban on footballs, baseballs, anything that might hurt somebody during recess. This has you talking big time. You're all over my Twitter, our Evening Express Twitter. And tonight, new information from the school that started this rule. Turns out that there's a lot of construction going on at the Weber Middle School in Port Washington, New York. So the school says that's why the rule was put in place, because there's not enough room to play safely. But the school district now says that once construction is over, quote, such restrictions would not be necessary. Now, of course, they're saying this after a lot of the outcry, which has people little bit dubious. Lynn. Yeah, not what they said originally, but now mm -hmm. they're coming out with this, right? So there are other schools out there that are taking similar steps. There are high schools in Kentucky that were advised by the Athletic Association to prevent post-game handshakes. Mm -hmm. They say they've apparently caused dozens of fights over the past several years. And an elementary school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, instituted a no-tag, no-chasing policy because the game was too rough for some kindergartners. Now, after some controversy there, that school taught the entire kindergarten class how to play safe. How to play safe. So why are the schools doing this? Well, the schools say it comes down to safety. I want you to check out these numbers. The CDC says more than 200,000 kids ages 14 and younger are sent to the ER every year because of playground injuries. 45% of those injuries are pretty bad. We're talking about things like concussions, dislocations, even amputations. You can imagine people sitting at home being like, oh, you uh, guys are fired. jumping out of their seats. Oh, they're fired up on this one. So joining us now, freelance writer Jennifer Brahenny Wallace. Jen, you're a mom. A lot of folks on our Facebook page, on my Twitter page, fired up saying there is no need for this. Kids have to be able to play, have fun. They're going to get hurt. What do you think about this? Well, I understand the impulse to protect our children. I think it's something that parents and school districts and cities have uh, trying to figure out what's the appropriate balance between protecting our kids and letting them test their wings. And I think it's, it's a case-by-case -case basis. But Jennifer, I mean, kids have played tag and thrown the football in the playground for decades. And sure, you get a bump, you get a bruise, but this is an American pastime and kids are just trying to be kids. Where do you draw that line? Well, it's hard. I think it's, uh, I think even colleges and the NFL are looking at, uh, you know, the ramifications of football and concussions and brain injuries. So I think there's a lot in the press uh, that's out there about concussions. And I think it's getting p parents worried I think we're a lot more educated than we used to be, maybe sometimes too educated to a fault. Uh, and I think it's bringing on this worry, perhaps unnecessarily. Jennifer, you have children. Would you let them play football and baseball during recess? Um, I, would, I would let them play baseball. I might discourage the football. Even if it's just uh, tossing it around, no tackle, just throwing it around casually. Well, no tackle, I don't mind. Flag football, I'm, I'm a huge fan of flag football. Mm -hmm. um, but the tackling at a young age, I have young children, the brain is still forming. Again, I'm, I'm you know, too educated a consumer, <laughs> I guess, for football I know. These days. I mean, I guess there's just sort of this, this argument for people at home. It's just like kids have been playing football and, and tag since forever. You know, right. it's just are we over-parenting our kids and over-protecting our kids where they don't get to just be kids? Well, let me say this. <clears throat> I, I, I'm against this because I think kids should be able to play. And here's the thing with me, Jennifer. I think scrapes and bruises and bumps are a part of life. Sure, you don't want them to get hurt badly. That happens. I mean, I broke bones as a kid. All my fingers and toes work just fine. But what do you think in terms of that? What's your perspective in terms of if a kid comes home with a scrape or a broken bone, do you say to your child, okay, no more of that game? Uh, well, I think I say it to myself. Luckily, we haven't broken any bones, but we've had a lot of injuries. Um, and I, you know, it's something I struggle with. Um, I, I'm fine with bumps and bruises. 
When we get down to concussions, then uh, then I think is where I draw the line. I just want to go real quick to the no handshaking rule after games. Right. I, I really feel strongly about this because you may be criticizing the kids for getting into fights. Where are the parents? They're teaching kids how to be good sports at the end of games. That is that's all the conversation that's not being had, right? You're right. It's all about sportsmanship. It's learning not to fight even if you're fired up about the game. And Jennifer, I think Lynn's bringing up a great point here. When you talk about something like that, don't you want to tell the kids, look, you can't fight and work with them rather than banning something because a few fights have broken yeah. out? I agree with you. I think that's the wrong message. I think the message we have to give our kids is there are ramifications for starting fights, for being a bad sport. Um, and just uh, taking that away is not, uh, is not punishment enough. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about parenting. You've got to teach yeah. the kids. Yeah. You've got to teach them. You